Is there really a difference between Himalayan salt sold at the grocery store and the one found in those lamps that people decorate their house with? I mean, the idea of eating something that is basically considered to be furniture just seems really weird to me. So I've decided that I'm gonna try turning this lamp into a usable form of salt to find out once and for all if they really are the same. I'm gonna prepare two identical dishes, one using the salt that I get from the lamp and the other using the regular Himalayan salt that I got at the grocery store. Then I'm gonna have a friend blind taste test both of them and see if he notices a difference. Now, in general, it goes without saying that eating furniture is not recommended, but I couldn't find anything on the box or on the warning sheets that said not to eat it. So let's get started. Okay, so the plan is pretty simple. I first have to break off a small piece of the salt lamp. And once I have that piece, I'm gonna grind it up into a powder and then I'm gonna use that to cook something with. So for the first step, which is breaking the piece off, I'm gonna be using uh, a pickaxe. I thought I would lie the lamp flat so that I could avoid damaging the base and hopefully not shatter the light bulb. The lamp ended up being a lot harder to break than I thought it was gonna be, and I had to try a different strategy. Um, there it is. Now, after completely decimating the lamp, I now had these nice chunks that I could turn into a powder, and it was more than enough to cook with. But before doing that, I just wanted to quickly wash them off to remove any dirt or dust that may have gotten on them while I was smashing it. Also, by running water over them like this, I'm essentially removing an outer layer of salt as it dissolves in the water so that all that's left is the fresh stuff in the middle. Unfortunately, after cleaning it, I realized that a few of the chunks were still a bit too big for me to crush into a powder, so I quickly transferred them onto some saran wrap, wrapped them in a towel, and began beating them with a hammer. When I felt they were good enough, I brought them back inside, and now it was time to turn these nice little salt chunks into a salt powder. To do this, I got a mortar and pestle and poured out some of the chunks from the Tupperware. I ended up removing a few of the bigger pieces though because I don't really need that much salt and it makes it much easier to crush. I crushed it until I got almost a powder-like consistency and when it was done, I compared it to the grocery store salt because I was curious to see if I would notice a difference. A little bit lighter. This one's more pink. I'm not really sure why this was the case, but I definitely did start doubting the salt lamp. Either way, it was time to start cooking, and I decided to pick the recipe that actually introduced me to Himalayan salt. This avocado toast recipe came from a vegan restaurant that I used to work at, and before this, I had never even heard of Himalayan salt before. Also, this recipe was kind of a restaurant secret, so unfortunately I can't really share it with you. Okay, so it's time to add the final ingredients. Okay, so we'll start with the first one, a little pinch of salt. I added about a pinch of salt to each toast, but at the last second, I decided to add a little bit more on the salt lamp one, just to make sure that he was actually able to taste it. Now that I was done adding salt to both the avocado toasts, I put them both into Tupperwares, put some saran wrap over it, and then labeled A for the regular salt, and B for the one made with the salt from the salt lamp. B for that one. This way, I wouldn't forget when he tried it, and I'd be able to tell which one he was having. Zaccaroni? Yo! So I've prepared two dishes, two identical dishes, mm -hmm. and I wanna see if you pick up anything weird or unusual about the dishes. Okay, what it is, it's an avocado toast. Ooh. Yeah, it looks really good, Zach. You can start. Okay, I'm going for the number, I'm going for letter A. It's so beautiful. Mm-hmm. Anything like noticeable or weird? Nothing weird. Okay. Mm. Mm. This one tends to be a little saltier. Yeah? Yeah. 
Is there anything like off about that taste though, or just it just is more intense? It's not off. It's definitely it's it's it sticks around. It's it's more pre prevalent. This one, the salt kind of dissipated, whereas this one still I can still taste it on my lips. Okay. And on my fingers actually. So both dishes, what I used to like spice them mm -hmm. was uh, Himalayan salt. Okay. Now this one had pink Himalayan salt from the grocery store. Okay. And this one had salt that I got from a salt lamp. No way. You know what's funny? I've always wanted to try that. Really? Yeah. <laughs> from Walmart. <laughs> it's really good. I'm going to buy a salt lamp from now on and never buy, have to buy salt again in the grocery store. It's awesome. So in the end, I was able to successfully cook something using salt from a salt lamp. And I think if I hadn't put so much on, he probably wouldn't have even been able to tell the difference between that one and the one from the grocery store. This is because, despite where it might come from, at the end of the day, salt is salt, and its shape, size, and color are only a small part of what makes it whole.